and remove the injector nozzle from the fuel rail. Lubricate the O-rings on the new injector with fresh motor oil and install the new injector onto the fuel rail using the reverse procedure of removal. Reconnect the electrical harness connector. With the new fuel injectors attached to the fuel rail, reinstall the fuel rail onto the intake manifold. Attach any brackets or bolts removed earlier. Reattach any fuel lines, vacuum hoses, or wiring harnesses disconnected during the removal. Reconnect the negative battery cable and rearm the fuel system. Turn the ignition key to the run position and check for leaks. Start the engine, again check for leaks, and test drive the vehicle to be sure of proper operation. Right, now this is something called a Hall Effect switch. Uh, Hall Effect switches are digital switches. Uh, they're something rather new. And uh, these are used in virtually all the new cars to replace the old magnetic style pickups. Mm -hmm. Now, when you test the Hall Effect switch, though, you can't use the ohmmeter because there's nothing there for an ohmmeter to test. You, you right. need to have a, a, a different type of a tester. Here again, we'll use our universal test lead, but when we just use it like this, it, it is a Hall Effect tester. And this has the Chrysler configuration molded onto it uh, without any other adapters connected, so we can plug that right into the... Chrysler pickup coil that we're working on here, the Chrysler Hall Effect pickup. And if the light is on, it means that this device is working. Okay. If so the light far. wasn't on at this point, we know that it was uh, not working. A bad like Hall that. Effect, mm -hmm. right? Now I'm going to take a feeler gauge. Now this feeler gauge will substitute the metal blades that are on the rotor that go through the air gap. And as I pass the feeler gauge through the air gap, the light should wink on and off. And it does. Showing that this Hall Effect switch is capable of starting and running the car. Okay. The Hall Effect switches are not only used in Chrysler vehicles, they're also used in many Ford, GM, and import vehicles. How do we test those, Jim? There are different configurations, of course, for all the different vehicles, so I brought along a box that's just filled with different leads, Fords and GMs and so forth, so okay. uh, systems like this are available for mechanics and uh, store people to to test all the different Hall effects you can get them packaged separately too so, so you can get the lead that you want for your vehicle plugs right into the tester and then you plug that into your Hall effect switch test it right on the car it'll tell you quick and easy well Jim I think that pretty much concludes our test I want to thank you for coming by my pleasure on late model vehicles the pickup coil has been replaced by a Hall effect switch these are tested using the following procedure First, connect the Castar Hall Effect tester to the Hall Effect switch leads. The LED indicator on the tester should be lit. Pass a feeler gauge through the air gap in the Hall Effect switch. If the Hall Effect switch is working, the LED indicator on the tester should blink off as the feeler gauge passes through the air gap. To replace your Hall Effect switch, the tools you will need include a quarter inch drive socket set, a set of screwdrivers, and of course the correct Hall Effect switch for your vehicle. Before beginning any repair, make sure to start with a cool engine. The first step whenever working on the electrical system is to turn off all electrical accessories, including the ignition key, and disconnect the negative battery cable. This will prevent damage to other electrical components that may be caused by arcing or sudden voltage spikes. Let's replace a typical Chrysler Hall Effect switch assembly. The Hall Effect switch assembly is located in the distributor underneath the cap and rotor. Locate the distributor cap. This can be done by finding a spark plug and following the spark plug wire to the distributor cap. Some vehicles may have a splash cover over the distributor cap and wires. Remove the splash cover to gain access to the cap. Remove the retaining screws and lift the distributor cap off. Once the cap has been removed, move it aside to gain access to the rotor. Pull up on the rotor in a steady motion to remove it from the distributor. Now is a good time to inspect the shutter blades found on the rotor for damage. Replace it if damage is found. The Hall Effect switch assembly will be located directly below the rotor. Locate the Hall Effect switch connector and disconnect from the wiring harness. Lift the Hall Effect switch from the distributor. Some vehicles will require the removal of retaining clips before the Hall Effect switch can be removed. 
Once the Hall Effect switch has been removed, compare the old assembly to the new one. Reconnect the Hall Effect switch lead and reinstall the new Hall Effect switch assembly into the distributor, making sure it is fully seated into the housing. Before reinstalling the rotor and distributor cap, inspect them for cracks, arcing, discoloration, and electrical punctures. Replace the rotor and distributor cap at this time if damage is found. Reinstall the rotor onto the distributor. Reinstall the distributor cap and tighten the retaining screws. Reinstall the splash shield if one was removed. And don't forget to reconnect the negative battery cable. Start the vehicle to ensure proper installation. Many GM vehicles also have a Hall Effect switch assembly located below the distributor cap and rotor. To ease viewing in our example, we will replace the Hall Effect switch with the distributor removed from the vehicle. However, in most cases, the Hall Effect switch can be replaced with the distributor in the vehicle. Remove the distributor cap by turning the hold down fasteners counterclockwise one quarter of a turn and lifting the distributor cap off place it off to the side. Lift the rotor off from the distributor shaft. Loosen the retaining screws from the Hall Effect switch and remove it from the distributor. While removing the assembly, disconnect the Hall Effect switch assembly connector. Once the Hall Effect switch has been removed, compare the old switch to the new one. Reinstall the new Hall Effect switch to the distributor with the retaining screws. Be sure to reconnect the Hall Effect switch connector. Now is a good time to inspect the rotor and distributor cap for cracks, signs of arcing, discoloration, and electrical punctures. Replace the rotor and distributor cap at this time if damage is found. Reinstall the rotor and the distributor cap and you're done. It's time to review the Hall Effect switch replacement. Begin by disconnecting the negative battery cable. Then locate the vehicle's distributor. Remove the distributor cap retaining screws or clips and remove the distributor cap. Remove the ignition rotor and shutter blades. Inspect the shutter blades for damage. Disconnect the wiring connection and remove the Hall Effect switch from the distributor. Compare the old and new Hall Effect switches to ensure the proper replacement. Install the new Hall Effect switch into the distributor and reconnect the wiring connector. Reinstall the ignition rotor and shutter blades. Reinstall the distributor cap making sure it is properly seated. Finish by reconnecting the negative battery cable.